Hello and welcome to the channel. We will be exploring vintage Apple hardware and today I got something really cool for you. It's the Mac Mini G4. When this original Mac Mini launched in 2005, things were a little bit different. Apple was going through a transition from PowerPC to Intel. With another transition going on right now to Apple's in-house silicon, I thought it would be super interesting to revisit the past and see what kind of machines these were. Now be aware that it's gonna be a struggle for this 16 year old Mac as it only comes equipped with one gigabyte of RAM and an aging hard drive that we will be replacing with an SSD. We will also connect it to the internet and see what the experience is like. Can you use one in 2021 as a daily driver? Now let's begin with the turbo. To open the case you need to loosen the hidden clips, gently but firmly lift the core of the computer out of the case. Let's take out the RAM first and place it aside. We'll come back but first let's assemble the SSD. The Mac Mini G4 uses a 44 pin 2.5 inch ID laptop hard drive. I bought a cheap compatible enclosure that I'll link below and the Transcend 128GB M SATA SSD. Let's open the enclosure and place the SSD into the mounted bracket. Place the board inside the case and there are 6 small screws that came with the case to join them together. The old hard drive is located underneath the optical drive and there are three screws that hold the assembly fixed to the motherboard. Unscrew those and then gently lift the assembly making sure not to tear any cables, especially if your Mac mini is equipped with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Carefully remove the fan and power button cables from the IDE controller. Next we need to remove the fan to get access to all the hard drive screws. Note that those screws are held on firmly so you need some power to get them out. Now that the fan is gone we can access all four screws holding the hard drive in place, remove those and then to remove the hard drive wiggle it right and left while pulling it away from the ID controller and that should release it nicely. Now we are ready to insert the new SSD. To insert the drive, line up both rows of pins and make sure they all sit properly into the controller before trying to push it in. And then wiggle the drive until the pins are no longer visible. Amazing, we are ready to reassemble the Mac Mini, so just go back in the reverse order, put the four screws back into the drive, reattach the cables and then secure the fan. Before we get back to reassemble, let's quickly touch on thermals. This Mac Mini runs hot and the old thermal pad that was installed is not doing its job properly. I took out the logic board, disassembled the heatsink and as you can see the thermal pad is completely caked. I removed it with rubbing alcohol, installed some fresh paste and reassembled everything. Next up comes installing the OS but first we need to prepare the Tiger boot installation USB. To do that we use this Qtil to find out which of the devices is our USB key. On my machine it's listed as disk 2. Now we need to partition it properly using APM and JFS+. Next we need to verify that the Tiger ISO is ok. Perfect, we have our ISO, it's ready to be loaded, but we need to know where to load it to. In my case this will be disk 2 s 3 and as you can see there's an Apple HFS USB drive that we just formatted ready to go. Let's double check that all parameters are good and fast forward to when the restoration is complete. Despite the warning our USB mounted successfully and we can see the files. Now let's grab the key and boot off this USB drive. To boot off this USB drive we need to find the path where it's located and we do that by listing it in the device tree and then looking for the clues which are USB and disk. Let's construct the full path to our USB and give it an alias UD. Let's try to list all the files that are there, there we go. And this means that we can give it the boot command to start the installer and proceed with the installation. Note that the path to the USB drive will be different depending on the model of your Mac, so instead of just copying the commands, find the correct path in your device tree. There is good news, the SSD is detected properly. Now let's create two partitions and use the primary one to install the OS. I know how much you hate to wait for stuff to install, so fast forward over that and then stop to enjoy the startup sounds. The Mac Mini is now running a fresh version of OS X of the SSD. I'm gonna install some games, but before we jump into the gameplay, let's talk about specs. It's using a 1.42 GHz PowerPC G4 processor that's a single core and it comes equipped with 1GB of RAM. That's the maximum amount that this machine is capable of supporting. 
Responsible for graphics is the low-end ATI Radeon 9200, which is soldered onto the mainboard. The interesting thing about the cooling is that it uses the bottom of the housing for dissipating the GPU heat, which means that if you turn the Mac Mini on its side, it can actually improve performance. To put it all in context, the specs were not amazing even by 2005 standards. What was amazing is that Apple was able to put all this in a small enclosure and sell it for a cheap price of $499. Let's start things off with one of my favorite games, Quake 3. It's a great be benchmark, as you can see it opens up pretty fast. I will just quickly enable the frame counter so that we see what kind of performance we're getting and then let's jump into the game. Short wait and the loading times are not too bad with that SSD that we installed, I like that a lot. And the frame rate we are getting at this resolution of 1024 by 768 and 32-bit colors is around 64.9 FPS in the time demo and uh, as you can see when I'm playing this it sometimes goes up to 100 sometimes dips below 60 so it's not butter smooth by any means but it's quite playable and it's an enjoyable game for some retro gaming. At higher resolutions though you can see that this is a low-end machine and it will struggle to even get to 40 or 50 frames per second and I would not recommend running it at anything over 1024 by 768 Now let's jump into a game that's a bit more period appropriate for this Mac machine and see how it performs. It came out a year before the Mac Mini and it's called Unreal Tournament 2004. Play. The game is running at the same 1024 by 768 resolution as did Quake 3, however you can see that it is a more demanding game, especially here in the outdoor areas. We are getting around 30 frames per second, now it's dipping into the mid-20s, which tells me that lowering the details in this game to get to that smooth 30 frames per second gameplay would be a wise thing to do. Next up, let's switch up the pace and see how a real-time strategy performs with another game from the era and that's Warcraft 3 The Frozen Throne Expansion. I don't have a way to measure the frame rate performance of this game, so we will have to rely on just the look and feel and see how responsive the actual gameplay is. I will be playing the campaign, so let's see what we can do. The thing that I find super interesting and appealing about this platform the Mac OS 10.4 Tiger Power PC is the amount of games and programs and community that exists around these old machines. Coming from the PC I was surprised to see that a lot of my favorite games were actually ported to Mac OS as well. And having support for Mac OS 9 through emulation you can also run games that are older around the turn of the century for example i tried it with diablo 2 and it worked pretty great now let's look at the gameplay in warcraft 3. judging by the feel i would say that we are running at around 30 frames per second with occasional dips into the mid 20s but i don't find it to be a problem when it comes to playing an rts game and i had tons of fun playing warcraft 3 campaign here Having tested these three games, we can now answer the question, is the Mac Mini a gaming machine? Yes, it can be, it's not gonna be the fastest and there's definitely more powerful stuff that was out in the era, but it can run these games decently enough and when you go for some even older titles, you will get performance that is excellent and there is a ton of games that are supported. Next up, let's investigate how this Mac Mini performs as a productivity machine and to do that, we will kick things off with browsing. What I find exciting when using an old computer is that it is a time capsule. If you install an older OS, games and software that were released around the time that it was new, you can experience the same performance as you would back in the day. It kinda gives you a glimpse into the past. Unfortunately, you cannot do the same with the web. It's ever fluid and evolving and 16 years of web development has left this Mac in the dust. The biggest breaking change has been almost universal HTTPS adoption and a lot of these older browsers do not support the newer TLS standard. And that means that the Safari that you can install can no longer even establish a connection to most websites. So we have a more modern alternative, 10.4 Fox, which is a Firefox clone ported to PowerPC. 
First, let's try opening Apple's website. As you can see, it mostly loads, but huge images are almost impossible for this Mac Mini to render. And the scrolling performance is bad. Uh, the buy page does not even load properly. So next, I tried to visit Macintosh Garden, a far simpler website. Here, the performance is good and it is perfectly fine if you don't mind being patient with load times. Wikipedia also works well. Scrolling performance is good enough and it only struggles on bigger images. Unfortunately, watching web video is impossible. YouTube struggles to play a frame every few seconds at 360p. I tried lowering the resolution to abysmal 144p and things have improved, but only slightly. It's still a slideshow at that resolution. And now the question is, can you use this Mac for web browsing? For light work and casual browsing, the answer is yes, but for something like video or multimedia, you need something much more powerful, like perhaps your mobile phone. Next up, let's see how this Mac performs in Photoshop CS2. Opening a full-size photo from my Canon DSLR does take a few seconds, but is generally fast enough. Now adjusting levels, curves and contrast is fast and the changes appear almost immediately. Using the built-in text and shapes is also fine. Blending settings work without issues. Where it struggles though is the performance in the Liquify tool. To be honest, I did open an 18 megapixel image and the more realistic scenario would have been using just an 8 megapixel image. Something more what a consumer grade Canon EOS 300D could produce in that era. To sum it all up, can it run Photoshop? And surprisingly, the answer is yes. A lot of the adjustments that you would do in a modern equivalent, you can do in CS2. And with a bit of patience, I can imagine using it. Spending time with this Mac Mini has been a rewarding experience for me. Unfortunately, it's much too weak for a day-to-day -day machine, but there's a certain amount of charm when it comes to PowerPC and the Mac OS Tiger days. Testing old games has been a blast and for a trip down memory lane this is an excellent machine. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, like and leave a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts about the Mac Mini or the PowerPC days and let me know what you would like to see up next. I have some exciting new content coming up, there will be more Macs and we will also go into the PC side of things, so stay tuned by subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.